Hello everybody, Dr. F. Scott Field here, and I'd like to introduce you to our newest sponsor. The NPTE Final Frontier is the review course that I wish was around when I took the board exam. For those of you who know my story, it took me a handful of times to pass that exam, and quite frankly, I really wish I had an an exam review course around, uh, just like the NPTE Final Frontier. Uh, Check out their website, npteff.com, and use the code HET at checkout for 10% off to all of our listeners and fans. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an interesting episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. This is your host, Dr. F. Scott Field. And there's been a lot of chatter on social media this uh, last few hours about uh, CSM and uh, people that uh, have gotten selected to present. Uh, And this isn't just a a CSM episode, but uh, it's not very often that I come on or or one of us come on and do a solo episode. Um, But this one had to be done because we need your input. We need a call to action here. We need you guys to get vocal about uh, presentations in the physical therapy world, for sure. Uh, But really, conferences worldwide, it seems like there are opinions that the same people are getting chosen to present the same stuff over and over and over again uh, across many different um, conferences, right? And that may be the case. Um, I I, want to give a short story. I want to just kind of let you know about my experience when it comes to presenting at conferences. Uh, I had applied to present at many conferences over the last, I'd say, five or six years. Um, Most of my applications were put in well before I was in academia, well before I was a professor, before I had finished my educational doctorate. And every single one of those applications was rejected. Um, I don't know that the topics mattered per se. You know, uh, I thought they were innovative. Some of them were great. Some of them were not. Uh, Some of the proposals were excellent. Some not so excellent. Um, But, you know, I tried, right? I put myself out there. I went through the application process. I did the best I could to put together the best possible proposal. and, And it, you know, for whatever reason, did not get selected. Recently, uh, since engulfing myself in a little bit more of the uh, social media aspect and the board aspect of several different committees, um, I've gotten more involved. Uh, The podcast, uh, obviously, the HET podcast has grown my network probably tenfold. I, I, I say that time and time again, and I'm so blessed for the guests that have come on the show, the people that I've gotten to meet, uh, and interview, and just talk with, and uh, again, cross paths with time and time again at conferences. In a conference like Combined Sections, it's just that, right? It's a a meeting of all of the sections. So you've got uh, eight, 10, 12 different sections, you know, however many there are these days. And those sections each have time slots that they have to fill right? Uh, And it's probably upwards in the number of four to six per day, maybe. Um, And so, you know, the conference only goes for three or four days. Uh, And let's, let's, again, be a little conservative here and call it six, right? Uh, Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but six time slots per day per section. Uh, You're looking at a total of, you know, approximately 60 presentations per day times four days, that's 240 presentations, right? I don't know how good my math is on this, but it's close, right? Let's call it 200 to 300 presentations, somewhere in there. And, you know, even if some of those presentations have two or three or four people on them, right, uh, you're still only looking at a max of 1,200 people that are getting accepted Uh, for these presentations, right? And some of those are are just solo presentations, right? It's just one person presenting. So, you know, it's got to be less than that, right? So if you imagine 1,200 people are being selected to to talk at at the APTA's biggest conference, 
it's not a whole lot of people being represented, right? If there's 300,000 something PTs in the nation and uh, another, I don't know, 30 or 40,000 PTAs maybe, um, you know, that's a very small percentage that's getting uh, accepted to speak at, at APTA CSM, right? Um, and then again, let's look at some other conferences too, right? You've got the, the APTA's ELC, right? The Educational Leadership Conference, uh, geared more toward academicians, right? Program directors, um, clinical educators, right? And, and uh, clinical education coordinators. So that conference, much, much smaller, right? Uh, less, less options for speaking. Um, and so, you know, the numbers are what they are, but they're, they're pretty small if you think about it in a big picture, right? So how are we able to put together a successful proposal and get accepted to speak at some of these conferences, right? Uh, I would love to hear your input. If you are on a committee that chooses these speakers, we would love to hear about how uh, that gets done, you know, what that selection process looks like. Um, if you have submitted before and successfully uh, had your, your proposal, um, you know, brought forth to the conference and you were able to present, we'd love to hear about that experience. If you've, uh, you know, applied to, to be a presenter several times or a speaker and just have never been accepted, we'd love to hear that. We'd love to hear your opinion on what's going on with uh, conferences and speakers that are being selected. Um, we'd love to hear your ideas, your thoughts on how to get more people spotlighted and, and highlighted at these conferences to talk. Uh, you know, great ideas, innovators. Um, you know, maybe if, you know, the, the, your speech doesn't get selected, well, then it goes to, you know, another option. Maybe there's an online option or, or recordings of, of us, you know, maybe while the conference is going, there's some sort of recorded section of speakers that didn't get chosen to present live. I don't know, I, but I would love to hear your answers. I would love to hear what you think is going on. Uh, we'd love to hear, you know, some of the facts behind it. We'd love to hear what kind of selection process there is, what rubrics are used, so to speak, right? Uh, the more educated we can be as a profession on who gets selected and how, uh, I think the better the chances are that, that new and innovative speakers will be brought to light and be able to speak. Um, and it's not to take away from any of the speakers that are currently presenting. Uh, you know, they obviously have some good stuff to talk about. Um, but if there's a feeling that it's the same people talking about the same stuff all the time, maybe we need to look at other options. Maybe we need to look at, you know, what's out there and what's available. Like I said, this episode is just more to get your mind flowing a little bit and to get thinking on how can we make these presentations more accessible to, to the the greater masses, right? How can how can we make it possible for more speakers to get involved? And you know, it might be something like uh, submitting a poster presentation, right? Or uh, you know, shoot students. We haven't really even touched upon student presentations, right? Is that a possible section that we can look into? Uh, you know, how do they get involved? Do they piggyback and do some research, and then that gets submitted, right? I know there's been a ton of wonderful posters presented by students. Uh, how many, you know, students are, are talking and presenting might be another thing to think about, but um, I don't know. We just want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. We want to hear, you know, what you think could make it better, you know, what what's working so far, what's not working. Uh, we just, we just kind of want to take this episode and and make it about possibilities you know what what what's out there what what are the possibilities what opportunities are out there to make conferences better uh, to make the uh, speaker selection better um, you know it, is there a lot of red tape and politics behind it possibly uh, if that's the case how do we fight that how do we get around that um, you know I don't have the answers to this. I, I like I said, I've been rejected uh, many, many times. It's just until recently when I started getting involved in in some of the groups and some of the other activities and things that are involved that I actually got my first uh, two presentations accepted. That was uh, last year. Well, that's not true. We had one other that was accepted 
prior to my EDD, and that was at the ELC conference. Uh, we talked about podcasting and higher education. Uh, really enjoyed that one. Uh, and now this year coming up, uh, went one for two at ELC. So one got selected, one did not. And one for two in CSM, where one got selected and one did not. And it, it, truth be told, there wasn't a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it, because the one that got selected at ELC did not get selected at CSM. And it seemed like our proposal for the one going into CSM was better than the proposal at ELC. But again, right place, right time, uh, you know, right audience, you know, maybe, maybe we're submitting to the wrong section, you know, maybe, maybe again, it's the wrong time. You just never know. So, it, it, you know, the more that we can learn about this, the more we can find out if there's any stakeholders that are involved and want to talk about this, we'd love to hear it. Let's, uh, let's start a discussion, um, you know, on social media. Let's, let's use uh, Twitter. Let's use Instagram. Let's use Facebook. Um, and just, I, I think, realistically, we, we probably need to keep it under one hashtag just to keep everybody in the same place and, and talking about the same thing. Um, and, you know, I would like to recommend, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, we use the hashtag HET conference. Um, that'll be the easiest way to kind of keep this all under one, uh, one hashtag, one, one setting, if you will, one platform. Uh, if we're going to do it over multiple platforms, but utilize that hashtag, you can search it on, on whatever platform you feel comfortable with. And we'll try to compile a bunch of, uh, you know, opinions and ideas and takes and put it all into one sort of document and put it out there for people to, to read, you know, for stakeholders to read and take a look at. Um, because like I said, my, my big thing is always just trying to amplify people doing wonderful and amazing things, you know. Uh, that's how I'm trying to use my platforms. That's how I'm trying to use the, the podcasts, um, you know, and my voice uh, is to just raise up others that are doing much, much cooler things than I am, you know, way smarter than I am. Uh, you know, I, I love not being the smartest person in the room because that means I'm learning, right? If I'm the smartest person in the room, I need to leave the room and find a different room, right? So uh, I surround myself with, again, people that are just doing amazing and epic things that are just way smarter than I am. And, and I'm blessed to be in their presence and to learn from them. Uh, so I would love to see a lot of these people out there presenting and, and you know, bringing their, their talents and their, their God-given gifts to, to presentations and to, um, you know, discussions at conferences. Uh, but we just need to know more about it. We, I think we need to do a deeper dive on, you know, how these things get selected. What do we need to know? What, you know, how do you optimize your chances of getting selected? Uh, how do you put together a good proposal for, for you know, conferences? So. This is my two cents on it. Like I said, this is my experience. Uh, it's been really tough for several years. The last two or three years have been a little more successful, but again, it's it's hit or miss. You know, it's 50-50. It hasn't been all unicorns and rainbows. So you'll see me uh, share on social uh, the one or two presentations that got selected, but you'll also see my failures too. And I'll, I'll talk about the ones that didn't get selected. Um, and, and we got great feedback for one of them. Like one of them, we needed more active learning. You know, there, it needs to be more than just sage on a stage talking about our expertise. There needed to be some more learning incorporated. Plus some of the studies that we used, um, the research behind it wasn't, U, wasn't all US based. So we needed more, more research uh, based out of the US. So back to the drawing board, right? We'll go back, we'll, we'll revamp that. We'll try to get more studies that are based out of the US to kind of show what we're trying to do and accomplish. And then we'll we'll shoot for it again next year. Um, but but I think that's kind of my big takeaway is like don't give up, right? Jimmy Jimmy V, the Jimmy V Foundation, right? Don't give up. Don't ever give up. That's his phrase, right? And uh, man, that that phrase is so powerful. It, it it hits me in the gut every time I hear him say it. Every time I see him say it, uh, his speech was just incredible. If you've never watched it, go to ESPN uh, or go to YouTube and just look up Jim Jim Valvano speech on ESPN. Uh, amazing. The guy's dying with cancer and he's giving it his all up, on, up there on the stage. They give him the, you know, hey, you got two minutes left. Come on, wrap it up. And he's like, yeah, right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm dying of cancer up here. You want me to stick to a two minute uh, time frame? Yeah, uh, whatever. You know, that's not happening. 
but the guy was just so, so inspiring, right? And for those people that didn't get selected this time, like, again, I, I say don't give up. Don't, don't ever give up. Find a different way. Find a different avenue. Find another section to, to apply to. You know, partner up and collab with some other people that have done it before or, or that might bring a different angle to your, your presentation. You know, just keep trying to, to find different ways and different angles to get in and don't get discouraged because, uh, you know, it, I know you've got a great message. You know, you've got a great message. A bunch of people that helped you get to this point know you have a great message. It's just about getting it up there on the stage in front of people and spreading it. And then again, the hope is that people take that and learn from it. So if we're really truly trying to practice at the top of our license and give the best that we can to our patients and our, our prof, you know, other clinicians and, and the professors and the students that are all involved in, in physical therapy, then, you know, we need to be having the right people out there presenting the right things. And, and the tides are changing. I mean, physical therapy isn't what it used to be. There's a ton of different avenues out there to be very successful in the field of physical therapy. That again, is not just that clock in, clock out nine to five therapist. I talk about this all the time, right? Let some of those people get out there and talk about the different avenues and ways that physical therapy can be impactful in the world. You know, um, that's my two cents. And like I said, uh, hopefully you guys, again, this is a call to action. We want to hear about what you think is going on, what's working, what's not working. How could it be made better? Give us all of your input on this and we'll try to compile it and put together like a white sheet for it. Um, you know, just something that, sh that shows, hey, here's the conferences that are out there. Um, here's how to, you know, put together a good proposal. Here's how to make yourself stand out. Here's the, the best possible chance that you can get selected. Here's some ideas and tips for that. Um, you know, might be going to other conferences outside of the realm of physical therapy. Uh, I saw some people doing some really cool things at conferences that are meant for doctors, right? And surgeons and uh, other healthcare providers. We, we, we definitely need a place at that table, right? If we're experts in something they're talking about, Maybe time to just go to another conference outside of the world of physical therapy. So consider that as well. But let's use the uh, the hashtag HET conference. Um, and hopefully we can make a little noise and come up with a white paper about uh, all the things that are out there, uh, whether they be good or bad and improvements that could come. Um, you know, I hope you'll you'll take the time to, to start this conversation with us and engage with us because uh I don't have the answers, you know, again, I wasn't uh, very successful. So uh, I've had a couple presentations selected and I'm very blessed and grateful for that. Uh, but I have not been successful for many, many years prior to that. So five or six years of getting rejected completely. And then the last two years or so, or three years of, of getting a couple accepted here and there, you know, I, I wish I could say that I was an expert on it and I could give you more detail, but I just don't, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm turning to you all. I'm turning to the audience. I'm, I'm hoping you'll spread this out and share it. Um, like I said, I'd like to get it to as many of the physical therapists as we possibly can uh, to get their input on it because uh, they're stakeholders, whether they're presenting or they're going to hear somebody present what they'd like to hear about, uh, you know, who should be represented, whatever. Uh, like I said, let's use the hashtag HET conference and we'll start this conversation up and see where it goes. I uh, hope this finds you guys doing well and enjoying your summer. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Hopefully it'll be uh, with a guest and not another solo episode. But this was just something I kind of had to get off my chest and wanted to, to hear what the, the audience has to say about this. Uh, because it's, it's something that has been boiling up the last couple of years. And I think COVID really kind of shook things up a little when we had to go to virtual conferences and things like that. And you know, I think I think there's some other opportunities out there and, and maybe we just need to to have a powwow and talk about it and maybe bring bring it to light and see what we can do. You know, so looking forward to hearing your guys thoughts and ideas, um, you know, obviously keep it respectful, as always, uh, try to be the consummate professional when when interacting with people here. Um, you know, we don't need to finger point name call. Let's just, uh, you know, keep it positive, keep it moving in the forward direction, and let's find some, some good ideas, all right? Thank you all so, so much for, for listening, for being, you know, guests, for sharing this out, uh, and again, for subscribing to the podcast, for leaving ratings and reviews. Those things all help us. 
uh, you know, keep this thing going. So thank you so much. And we look forward to hearing from you guys.